All right, so let's dive right into the programming. Here we've got the basic stamp editor software uh, received from Parallax.com, and we're going to be using a language called PBasic. In our case, we're using version 2.5, and we're going to be uh, programming the basic stamp 2 module microcontroller. Here we've got, for the first section of the program, the variables. In our case, we're using this nibble type variable labeled hits, which will be our 16-bit binary counter variable for storing um, the different patterns we've gotten. Here we've got a word type variable called total and that will be used to store the number of hits we've taken during each session. Here we've got a word type variable named report, which will be used as a counter variable later on when we deal with the four next loops. And right down here at the end of the section, we're going to be initializing hits to be equal to value of zero so that none of the LEDs are on, and it will be, um, it'll think it hasn't taken any hits yet. Okay, so let's move on to the next set of code. Now, you may not need this for your programming, because, um, your microcontroller might not be as broken as mine. Mine has a couple, um, couple bugs in the system and it keeps some of the pins on so this is just here to show um well rather to tell that all the leds should turn off um as soon as the system and program start up um if your microcontroller is working properly you will not need that okay so let's move on to the main loop of the program this is where all the major important code is going to be. In this do loop, as you can see, the do is up here, but the loop is way down at the bottom where it's going to um, loop from. It's all the code that's going to be repeated constantly throughout the program. In this section here, we've got an if statement that says if in zero equals one. That means if there's any voltage on pin zero, uh, the input pin coming from the tactile switch, then it'll do any of these programs. And here we go um, with another if statement asking if the total number of hits taken is zero. If it is, then it switches out and puts out a frequency at pin 6, which is our piezo speaker, does it for 2 seconds, and produces a 1 kilohertz signal. And after that, we move on to our auditory readout code. Alright, starting at the top, we have our first statement for the first 10 hits you take, asking to see um, if the total number of hits you've taken is greater than zero, and if it's less than or equal to 10. If it is, then it goes to the for next loop, here's that report variable we were talking about, and as um, you go through the for loop here, report will be given um, a value and then added to each time it goes through the loop. And if report equals um, the total number of hits, then it will exit the loop. Otherwise, it will continue to go through this small loop of playing a short chirp about um, one tenth of a second at 2000 hertz and then it will pause another tenth of a second and then it will continue the loop until re until it repeats itself um, as many times as there are hits moving down we have 
another one. This one is for any number greater than or equal to 11 and less than or equal to 20. And this one will produce a one second pulse at 2500 hertz to equal the first 10 hits you've taken. And then it will repeat that previous 1 through 10 code for the next 10 hits you've taken between um, the 11 and 20. The program continues that kind of cycle where it plays the long tone and then the short chirps for the next few sets of numbers. Once it reaches um, number 51, it changes it up and adds a different tone. This time it's going to be a half second tone at 3000 Hz. And then repeats the short chirp routine. After that, it will add the that 50 tone beep, and then it'll put in the one uh, the 10 hit beep for every set of 10 after the 50. So for number like 61, it will add the 50 hit beep, and then the 10 hit beep, and then any number after that will be given the short chirps. Now, if you hit over a hundred times, you will receive a short alarm instead, consisting of four half-second tones alternating between 2000 Hz and 3500 Hz. And then it pauses for a quarter second. This allows you, any player to know that they've been hit over a hundred times, and um, this can be expanded the same as the previous programs, but I per personally wrote it so that it, um, I doubt anyone would be hit a hundred times in one game. So if you need it longer, you can easily expand it with different uh, tone add-ons. Otherwise, you can keep it as is. All right, moving on down the page, we come to the buzzer sound that's played um, as soon as the program is turned on and running. It produces a 10 millisecond pulse of a thousand hertz through the speaker and that creates that slight buzzing sound. And here we have the actual trigger, cir uh, trigger routine where if any voltage is detected on pin 9 which is the input pin on our microcontroller where the output pin of the 555 timer uh, connects to. And if there's any voltage there, it moves on to the rest of this routine where a low and high command are produced on pin 8. This low high command creates a digital low 0 volt signal and a digital high 5 volt signal um, on the chips re on the 555 timer, excuse me, uh, on the 555 timer's reset uh, pin. This resets the chip back to a state of off. This, turn, this also helps turn off the pager motor for the rumble feature. And this three, uh, three command section here is what's used to debounce the trigger of the um, 555 timer chip so that it doesn't trigger multiple times if there's prolonged activity on the um, photoresistors. Here we have the most crucial part where hits um, and total both increase by one so that it registers that it has been hit and it will recognize that and these are used in the future of the program.